Welcome back everyone to another episode of Civil Textures. My name is Ferdi and in this tutorial we're gonna show you how to model your permeable car park in Flow. Now permeable car park are split into two categories, just a little information, is porous pavements and permeable uh, pavements. So the difference is the porous is basically water infra infiltrates throughout the whole surface of your pavement. So basically it could be asphalt, concrete or gravel. And the permeable pavement is basically where it infiltrates between the gaps. So for example, block paving, and you've got the sands in between and it infiltrates through that. So that a little thing you need to know. In this tutorial, we're going to cover all the basic stuff that you need to know to get you started with the modeling. Without further ado, let's begin. So for this tutorial, I've created this simple network. So we've got our permeable car park, which is 5 by 15. It's 450 mil deep and porosity 30% gives us a volume of 10. Now, if you want this smart block where you can change the depth, let's say to 0.7. And if you hit region, it will update the volume. But for this purpose, we're going to just do a 451. So it will give us a volume of 10. Now we've got our manhole that we're going to assign the storage structure to it. We've got S1 where we're going to have our flow control in so we can get it to flood because a network without flooding was the point of this video even. And then we've got our outfall. And then the catchment, in order to make it flood, it's 250 bar. This is not 250, I think it's 150 bar. Let's go to flow. In the design settings, I kept everything simple because I didn't want to go through the process of specifying the exact invert levels. Now in the nodes, I've named my nodes ICE1 where the storage uh, car park would be, S1 where the flow control chamber would be, and the outfall. I've added the eastings and northings, cover level, and the depth and width uh, for all the manholes. Added the area at the ICU one so it's 250 square meters in hectares, 0 0.025. Now in the links, what I've done is just typed ICE1 to S1, S1 to outfall, and flow automatically calculated all the upstream invert levels, downstream slopes, etc. In the flow controls, I've added S1, and I specified as a hydro brake, a design depth one, and design flow 0.5, and that is how we'll flood. So I'll run the analysis just so we can see. And as you can see, for the one year surcharge, for the 100 year is 7.8 cubes of flooding in the car park manhole and 0.3 in the S1. So if we look at 3D, you can see that's our flooding so the car park will go here so let's do this so we go to storage we're gonna specify the node that we're gonna assign the car park to so i see one structure type we're gonna go to car park now the width is five the length is 15 now the slope is basically the slope slash gradient of the length so if we look at our design we see the perforated pipe runs along the 15 meter therefore the gradient for the 15 meter so let's do 350 the depth is 450 it's in meters so 0.45 now the porosity is not 0.3 if you use 0.25 let me know why because i've seen some people use uh 25 porosity Syria sudden manual covered this in depth i'll leave the pages where it leaves it in the description below now the safety factor it's also covered in the serious ads manual and basically it's the percentage of not percentage is the failure rate so basically how much area goes into your structure for example it could be soak away from your car park and if it fails how adversely is going to impact your network but standard is two in order to apply these settings we have to click outside now if we go to the 3d model you can see that that's our storage car park. It, there is a slight tilt to it. That's the five in, uh, one in 500 or 350 as we specified. And if I change this one, let's say to one in three and then go to the 3D model, you can see that's the gradient of it. So the slope does matter. So let's go and do it 350 and we click outside. Now let's run our system, analyze it, take only a few seconds. You can see in the one year we're okay. 30 year slight surcharge. 100 year uh, plus 20 percent climate change is surcharge and 140 surcharge so no flood risk or flooding now i did 20 and 40 because that's the ea climate change guidance now if we go to the 3d model you can see that the storage is almost fully utilized and you can see half of it is shown in blue the half is in gray the reason being is because of the slope that we have so if we had a bigger slope let's say one in 80 probably there'll be more flooding towards the ice1 so let's go do that just so you can visualize it. So let's do one in 40 and you can see even in the long section it shows the gradient in it. So let's 
run the analysis and if we go to the 3d you can see that for, this is the one year so you can already see that the water will accumulate here so let's see the one in hundred and look at the 3d you can see the same storage but because the gradient is steeper it's flooding the reason being is because the water is always leveled you cannot have tilted water it's like even when you tilt your glass the water is still leveled so that is why we have a tilted kind of car park and the water trying to remain level and by the time this one fills up this is like reaches there make sure you have always your slope done correctly and if we go again and analyze just to make sure that it works one last time and we go to 3d you can see it works just fine now a good a thing to notice in the long section if we change the porosity to one you can see the storage became empty and if we change it to 0.3 oh, sorry if we change it to 0.3 it becomes like there is a hatch on it the hatch basically defines how much porous it is if we do 0.5 you can see the hatch becomes kind of thinner if we do 0.75 you can see it becomes thinner so that is one visual way to check if you have added your porosity and that's pretty much it about parallel paving now the thing that i personally like to do is the following so in the invert level i always make sure it's basically how they're gonna build it so if we have a cover level of 100, 101 then the block and sand will be 120 mil plus 450 of the type 1 material if i'm not mistaken is it type 1 or type 3 leave it in the comments below if you know i think it's type 1 pretty sure so 120 and 450 that's 570 so 570 minus the 101 cover level that brings us to 430 so 100 430 i think my math is correct and if we go to 3d so basically that's how they're going to build it so the first bit will be the block paving and then the sand and that's the permeable paving and around it will be the impermeable membrane if there is no infiltration and then you will have usually the pipe running underneath it at a sufficient cover depth so if we go look at the autocad drawing i've drawn a simple sketch to show that so basically the 450 is here right well sometimes you need more cover depth in your pipe depending on where you are so for car park i think the sewers for adoption says 900 mil but then it depends on your pipe strength and following the bs standards but as a rule of thumb i always use the source for adoption so this needs to be 0.9 therefore because i don't want a model and the manhole will be let's say somewhere here right that will be the extent of the manhole now i don't want my car park to be at the bottom here let's say at this point so i want it to be as close as to the real life scenario it is so that is why i do this method so if you do it differently let me know because we're still a growing community here so share with us what you're doing but other than that that is how you model a car park in flow thank you so much guys for watching if you liked the video hit the like button and if you loved it hit the subscribe button this will help the algorithm and promote my videos basically so other guys can see them and learn something i'll see you in the next tutorial